Hey guys, obviously it's been a very long time since we've uh, put a video out, um, just because we've been so busy. But finally made another one on the panorama, and the panorama is nearly there now. So this one is just about um, the finishing touches. So we'll have this video and one more after it, and then it's um, it's all done. Hey guys, back again. Um, it's obviously been a very long time since we've done anything on these caravans, just because I've been busy as usual, so nothing, well nothing we've filmed has happened on uh, the Panorama or Orange Ruffy. But, um, Panorama is looking very different from the last time that you saw it. As you can see, it's been painted. Um, and I'm real pleased about the way it's come out. Had to do a little cut of, you know, do a little bit of cut and polish here and there, but for the most part, it's really good. And a week or so ago, I did the wheels. And these hubcaps were very scungy, but I bought one of those alley polishing sets that you put on your um, bench grinder and used that to polish those up. So I was really happy with the way it came up. But it's looking good, and we are definitely on the home straight. But Heaps of little jobs to be done. So I'll show you what we're going to do next. Ah, oh, by the way, if it's flashing, it's just because of the lights. Right, one thing I did forget to show you is I've done the tail lights on it. So I put three new LEDs on it. Tried to make them look pretty similar to the originals. That's as close as I could get. So number plate and number plate light. So they look cool. Just got to put these mouldings on and the grab handles, which will get rid of these holes um, but we've got to do the striping first so you've got to stripe which you would have seen in previous videos stripe there stripe up there and the panorama signs um, down the front and we've got lightweight vagabond signs for the front and the rear in fact I'll show you I'll get them out and I'll show you all right so I can't remember when I did it, but I got the correct um, signs for it, or logos. In here somewhere. So I'll show you on this down the back here. Oh, there's those. So they're your. Is that is that the original? They are original panorama. Um, Where'd you get them? I got them from Dave McRobbie. So he, he got the leftover stock from the factory. So oh, so that's are, from the actual factory? From light, well, from Lightweight. So I'm not going to peel that off, but they're the signs that go on the front. These are the uh, the Lightweight Vagabond signs, which go on there as well. So they'll go on the front and the rear. This will go on the side. There must be another 506 sign somewhere as well. But I'm actually going to call the stripe guy tomorrow. Um, it's Sunday today. I'm a bit sad because the Warriors got knocked out of the prelims last night. So I've been down all day. But anyway. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, typical. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So next job that I want to do, which I've been avoiding because it's hard, oh. is this is mounted. Um... And you, you can't get this thick on veneer if you can. I don't know where to get it. So what I've done, that's only probably nine mil thick, I'd say, somewhere around there. So I bought a, up here a slab of pine. And I'll cut this down to size. And I bought some stain that hopefully will be a match. Close. I'll close to it. Yeah, I took a part off the unit and um, I went to Bunnings and matched it up with the stain there. So hopefully we're pretty close on that. So next job is to take that unit over there apart and make this. Although it will be thicker, I think it'll be okay. Hopefully, yeah. I think it'll be fine and it'll come up. It won't look the same as the other wood grain, but it'll be pretty close. Um... So yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. Does it have the designs? Like the grain, the grain's different. So if you look at that and you look at the grain in the cupboards, 
Sort of similar ish. Yeah. I mean, if you stay in it, you've got to tell. Not really. It's mainly trying to get the color correct, and I think I've got that pretty close. Pretty close. Um, and unfortunately, normally I'd use a table saw to do that, but it's at Dad's place, and I really can't be bothered going to get it, so we're going to try and do it with a skilly. All right, we'll get prepared and have a go. All right. Um, I think how to do this. I think it looks like this is done. It is in three, one, two, three, four different pieces. So we'll take this off. These are screw covers, but we'll try and keep those. And we'll try and keep this, um, what do you call that stuff? I forget the name of it, that goes around the side. And we'll also try and nudge it up next to this, maybe. We'll see what it looks like when it comes off. So. Lovely flat bladed screws. Which I'm not a fan of. Try and reuse these same hinges as well, actually. Are you going to change the screws up? Uh, no. Might use the same ones. There's only four of them, so it's not too painful. This thing doesn't fall when I take it off. Oh no, I think because it's the hinges are holding it. Oh no, I won't be able to use the hinges because they're wraparounds. <laughs> they're wraparound hinges. Oh. They're made for this thickness of board, I think. You look at that, and we're using 18 mil. Sorry. So that's not going to work. All right, I'll take the rest of this apart. We won't film it because it's going to be pretty boring. All right, I've taken this thing apart after finding hidden screws and nails and things. Um, so this is it. What's left of it here, basically? I've just measured it up. It's 12.20 wide which is um, obviously the imperial size of the timber that they used to use back in the day. Our sheets are now 1200, so obviously 1220 they, you know, got heaps of these little units out of one sheet. So the sheet that I've got is, four of, uh, is yeah, that's 1220 by 400. I'm going to make mine 405, so lay the hang a little bit more just because I can't be bothered trying to cut 4 mil with it. So I'll cut ours to 1220. Um, I'm going to make mine in one piece rather than the three pieces that I've made here. And then we'll cut the, um, the opening out of whatever size we want it to be. And manage to sort of save that piping that's come off it. So if we come around here. Hopefully, yep, we can put that back on and maybe try and reuse that as well. Um, I'll have to get some different hinges because that those hinges that we've got there aren't going to work. But um, other than that, we'll cut it up and put a piece in, see how we go. All right, okay, I've just cut this thing out. It looks pretty good. Just come around here and have a look. issue we've got is we've got a power cable here so I'll just notch that Cut out. Cut it in uh, I'll probably just put a die grinder in there actually. Um, oh you're going to cut it? Yeah yeah we'll just put it we might just die grind mark that and die grind it. Are you going to solder it later? No 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 I'm just going to go around that wire. Oh I, I, th I thought you mean cut the wire. No <laughs> no that's a power wire so we don't want to do that. Um, technically that should have conduit on it anyway. I have to talk to the sparkies about that, but we'll go around it. Alright, we'll do that. Alright, I found a bit of conduit. Well, it's for tail lights and that, but it'll do the same thing. 
with a um, with a split nut. So I'm going to try and feed that, and hopefully this will work. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay, see down there. Go under that under that plug. So that's wrapped around there because anything with exposed wiring, technically, it is not allowed. Electrical stuff really? can't be exposed at all. No. Oh, would it catch a fire or something? Uh, you just won't get an electrical wire. The other problem is, oh no, it's actually okay. I'm just looking at the height difference. So see that thing there? That's yeah. like 15 or 16 mil, and this one's only 10 doesn't seem to be we might have to put a like a five mil packer under it but if i'm going to do that um i've got some 40 by five flat bar which i could paint and put on there oh you look at that i'm just she thinking 40 by five and look at that that's exactly 40 mil from there to there what do you think you have to zoom in on it but yeah well, that's easy. And that will take up that 5mm gap because that one's higher than this one. Sorry about the scuff cam work, but. <laughs> yeah, that one's only like about 9, 9mm nine ply. And it looks to be like 14 or 15. So if I put some 5mm flat on there, which will screw to the bottom of this board, paint it that brown colour, which I've got it some, and that'll work. Boom. Right, I'll cut a slot out for that wiring. Just slot it a bit out there if you have a look underneath. The torch makes it a bit. Oh, does it? Okay. You can see that though, eh? This is the focus, yep. Sweet. So, see the other thing is, we don't necessarily have to go with the same size opening as what they've had before. We could make a a much wider I know but you want to keep it original don't you? Uh, well this is an original so it probably doesn't matter but if we make the opening wider and you've got a nice thick piece of ply, um, pine so the fact that it doesn't have any support underneath shouldn't matter it's a lovely piece of wood eh? it is Could you get I've just got to think that through actually and then we won't use the screw things i think we'll put you in there <laughs> and we'll screw it from Once underneath we get it we'll get this overhang even throughout and then um yeah we'll screw it from underneath so now i just got to think about how wide we want that opening to be all right have a play with it all right i've decided to make the opening uh 500 wide the other one was 450 but probably don't want too much weight because this is quite heavy hanging off that and the other that here on the old one was 35 i've made this 50 just because i like round numbers the hardest thing is i'm not quite sure i can't use a jigsaw on this i'm gonna have to somehow get a straight edge set up and drop the skill saw in there um be easier said than done, but that's why you need a table saw. Even with the ta yeah table saw, I could, I could use the put it up against the what gate about, and just drop it in. Oh, you can't really do drop saw, eh? No. No. No, I don't think so. Anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll have right, it's the next day, um, and I did manage to figure out a way to cut this thing out with the skill saw. So here's our finished product. Well, at least not finished because it's in its raw state. Um, I've just got to sand it up a bit. And here's the other bit here. Which obviously just goes in there. It needs to be sanded. Um, find some hinges and then That's how it goes. Um, and then we can tick this one off the list. Sweet. All I've got is uh, sanding it and staining it tonight, hopefully. All right. We've tried staining. Um, 
I'm not quite sure how that's going really. That's the colour it's supposed to be. So, so, so that right there is the original grain. That, that is, that's reasonably close, but on some parts it's darker. So this right here is the original grain and this is what he's, but that's what he's yeah, doing. I'll never get the grain, I'll never get the grain right. I'm just going to come around your side, just to eyeball it. I'll never get the grain correct, but I'm trying to get the colour close. So this is really dark, but if I put more reducer, because it's, it's three to one, so if I put more reducer in it, it's toned it down to this. So I might put more reducer in it again before I do the other. This is the underside, so it doesn't really, well, have you practiced? It doesn't matter too much. That's super dark. So you can see there that's lightening up quite a bit more. That looks, that little square there looks real similar to that, doesn't it? That's relatively close, eh? This square right there looks yeah. really close to You're that. You're going to have different types, so, eh? and amongst all that, it's just a sort of, that's just fine. And it looks like it's made up stuff anyway. All right. I'll carry on and play with it, and we'll come back, okay? All right, I don't know if we've had any success or not, to be honest. Um, but this is a little bit washed out, because I've still got another coat to go on. But it's, oh, I don't know. Looks similar. Very. Yeah. You're colorblind, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was no need for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got another coat of stain to go on there. I've been mucking around. Um, it has a reducer, which is not the reducer that I'm used to. It's for thinning paint, but apparently this reduces the, you know, how dark the stain is. So I've been mucking around with that, trying to get it as close as I can. At the end of the day, it's not going to look exactly the same because it's a completely different wood grain. But I've also got a satin clear to go over it too, which might hopefully change it a little Pop bit. Pop it out. No? Might pop it out or something. Yeah, it might do. It might do. We don't want it glossy. But yeah. So I'm going to leave this for about 15 20 minutes. And then I'm going to just whack a little bit more on and see how we go. Okay, sweet. Alright, I've just put this little bit in here. Come around and have a look. It, it's not perfect, but it's, it's not miles away either. Considering we've got one more coat to go on there and some satin clear. Which will, um, I don't know what it'll do really. It might not look quite as washed out as what it looks now, but I think that's a pass. Yep. What do you reckon? Yep. Yeah. It'll annoy me, but most things do. <laughs> Other people will probably be sweet with it. All right. I'll give it, I'll give it one more coat and then tomorrow in the morning, I'm going to throw some satin clear over it. We'll see how we go. Okay, we're just um, taking a bit of time out um, after work. This is the uh, um, this cover after we've stained it and varnished it. It's still a little bit tacky. We're going to put it back on. I've managed to save the piping as well um, and stapled that back on just to make it look a little bit more original. It's not exactly the same colour. How are you going to get? Close enough. Don't put your ball on it. Oh, I'm going to cut it out with a razor blade. No. Okay. So, we're going to screw it from underneath. So, we've pre drilled it. And um, now, all we need is a, uh, a small person <laughs> who can fit in there. And I can tell you, it certainly ain't me because there's no way I can get in there. <laughs> right. All right. We're starting to lose um, daylight now. But anyway, here it is. It is obviously a bit different from everything around it, but close enough that it sort of looks relatively period correct. So just got to varnish the actual lid here because we had to do both sides of that. Um, get some hinges and I'll throw that on in the morning. It'll be finished product. Cool. All right, just um, grabbing some time after work. I think last time was two days ago we filmed. So anyway, what we've done, we've finished this cover here. It is unfortunately quite different to the other bits around it, but sort of looks period correct. 
and does what it needs to do. So, which reminds me, I've got to get that out of there. So, we've got the Sparky coming in the morning and the Stripe guy. So, hopefully, tomorrow I'll get an electrical warrant and um, the Stripe guy will look at what needs to be done. He won't actually do it tomorrow, but we're, you know, get the ball rolling. Painted the bed base, got that done. Um, and the Sparky wanted this little plate which goes on the outside of the caravan on there, so it was a horrible powder blue worn thing, so we just whacked some paint on that. And I'm going to put that on now with some stainless screws. Oh, and we've also got a new outside light, which looks fairly similar to the old school ones, but it's LED. And uh, exterior plug, because it's got the wire in there and it's a double, which would be quite cool as well. All right, we'll put this, um, put this plate on. All right, so we've got this, I'll put this plate on um, with some stainless screws, because I've always done them with zinc plated ones in the past. Then a year later, you get rusty streaks running down the side of your caravan. And here, I've got this out for this, uh, for this stripe guy. This is a scungy old panel that came off the side of it. So it's this pinstripe, and I have to get a stripe guy to do it, which is a pain because you can't get pinstriping anymore. All it is is 24, 24 mil black with a 12 mil gold inlay over the top of it. Pretty easy stuff, but I'm going to have to get the stripe guy to do it, and he can put the panorama logos on for me at the same time. He's coming 7 30 in the morning, so. 7 30. 7.30 in the morning, then the Sparkies, well they'll show up when Sparkies show up, <laughs> and hopefully by tomorrow it'll have an electrical warrant, and we're, we're getting close, because we're taking this thing away in about 28th of October, four weeks, a bit over, so and I'm determined that it's going, so yeah, alright. All right, this video is long enough now. We've just had a look at it's 21 minutes without the intro and the end. So um, this will be the second to last one. And after this, we'll do one more. And then the panorama is all done. And it'll be time to start on Orange Rocky again. <laughs>